Okay. So, Jason, let's start like this. Let me. I'm going to show you first what has been very, I mean, very challenging for us in the last uh, three or four months. And then, uh, of course, then we move to the watch uh, by itself. But, of course, the challenge was really the, the liquid system. And that was the challenge and the interface between the mechanical movement and, and the liquid. So, the, one of the first challenges we faced was to have a, a, a perfectly rounded cycle uh, of, of glass tube. It's a very tiny tube that were, we didn't find a, a factory in Switzerland to, to create this. We, we thought that we should you know, easily find someone that does this kind of business in, in Switzerland, but nobody was able to do it. So that was the first chance to find a factory that can really do something perfectly rounded without, without angles, because of course the liquid has to move in a very you know, fluid uh, way within the tube. So we found a, a company in Germany to do it, and that was really the first uh, the big challenge. This one, compared to the other one, was an easy one. The second, we needed to find pistons. In fact, we call them in French piston, pistons, but it's more, uh, and the English word is bellows, B-E-L-O-W-S. Bellows, it's that kind of a container, a liquid container, and uh, again, to find a liquid container flexible enough to have a pressure and to release the liquid from this container to go into the tube was the big headache. We finally, after months and months of work and research with the engineers, we found a company in Philadelphia, US, which were able to, you know, to provide such a device. Those bellows are created for the aerospace uh, industry. It goes into the space shuttle, it, go, it goes into space, and is also going to the army. It's, it's a, it's a micro-liquid system container, which is created, manufactured in, in the US. So again, nothing to do with the watch industry. We had to find different guys, and it's funny enough, it's not really, you know, usually in the, in the Swiss watch industry, you always, if you go abroad, you go to Thailand for the dials, you go to China for the Ks, you, you know, or you, you go to China for the hands, and then you import them, and then you, you say it's Swiss made, because it's the 51% of the value, and they have to, have to be assembled in Switzerland, you know the story. Here, the, the, the concept, of course, because of the technology, had to, has, had to be Swiss, Swiss made, it had to be with a Swiss movement and everything, because it, it has to be very high end, but some of the components are, the, are coming from abroad, but not necessarily where we expect from. So Germany, USA, and it's not over. Then we needed to regulate the, the speed of the liquid because as you know, at every 12 hours there is a retrograde system. If you let it go straight, it can damage the, the bellow because the liquid goes back too fast into the bellow. So we needed to regulate this with what we call a liquid break. And this is this tiny, 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 li uh, little white thing, which is, you know, a liquid break with a little hole in the middle of it. This is in ceramic, by the way. You see it here. And there is a little hole of one micro, just to let the liquid go in it and to regulate this. It's, it's really about nano, nanotechnology. It's really, really, everything is so small and so precise. Finally, When you assemble the elements, you come to that little piece. And again here, you see the two bellows, you see the glass tube, and you have the base where you know everything holds together. In one container, in one bellow, you, you have one transparent oil. In, one, in the other bellow, you've got this water which is filled with a liquid. Uh, liquid with, uh, I mean, water liquid with, uh, with uh, fluorescein. It's a little greenish thing that makes this, uh, you know, colored. The principle is the following. Liquid, I mean, water and oil, they don't mix together. It's like the, when, you, when you put olive oil in the water, it doesn't mix. It's separate. That is the same, uh, the same uh, 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 system here, the same uh, idea. However, that was also one of the biggest challenge because this is a very good example, which is an, the enemy of the project. It's exactly what you see. You see those little bubbles here? Yes. It's no bubbles, in fact. There is no air inside. It's purely some of the, of the oil here passed 
in, within the liquid, within the water, and create those little white holes or, or bubbles here. Okay, and that was the enemy because we realized that in nanotechnology, that suddenly it, it, it doesn't mix, but there are some pieces that are separating. So to fix this problem, we had to find another company to be able to do the chemical coating inside the tube. And there are seven chemical coatings inside the tube. And that was another challenge to, to, to treat the tube, in fact, with the, these chemical uh, deposits. So this one is a prototype, so it's not, been, it's not, it's not done yet here in, in this prototype. So you see here the problem that we faced over the last few months. The cool stuff now with this device, which is, by the way, working, if I push bellow, the bellows, you see that the liquid moves. And on the other side, I push here, and you see the liquid moving, and you see the little bubbles again. So you see the problem that we had. But it works. I mean, the system works. The, great, the crazy thing is, try to push it. I, I'm going to hold it. You will see that the, the amount of energy is quite intense. Imagine that this is going to be the, the movement needs to push, to give the same amount of energy to move the liquid. So it's not an easy thing. It's not about just a little bit. It's uh, the energy needs to be quite impressive to power the liquid system. So, voila. So from this, now I can show you the watch. So from this, we move to the watch. And when you see the watch first, you see, of course, you see those two pistons. Okay? And here in my example, it's 805. I think, or 806. So you see the liquid um, around 8, 8 o'clock. Uh, it's a screw uh, down uh, crown, so it's already uh, unscrewed because we use it so many times. So when I uh, when I pull it, uh, you see that I can I can move the liquid uh, to 8 o'clock. I mean 9 o'clock, 9:30, 10 o'clock, 10:30, and so on and so on. But I can go backwards, of course. So there is no issue with the with that you know it's really cool. Eh? We really now master the technology. It has been, there is no trace, no liquid, no bubbles here because it, this has been treated. This one was not treated, so that was the trick. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it uh, up to the end of the quadrants. So it's 10, 10:30, 10 11 o'clock or so. So I'm gonna go to six o'clock now to 5:59 p.m. and 59 seconds and you have the retrograde system working, okay? Because it's a prototype and because everybody uses it, so it's like a spring which has a lot of tension and then suddenly at, at six o'clock, it releases the, the whole tension and, whoosh, and the liquid goes back, okay? We didn't want to use the full energy of the, of the spring because we use it about 10 times every 15 minutes. So here we have the trigger set for five o'clock. So you will see at five, the retrograde system will start. It's supposed to be starting at 5.59, huh? okay? So it's 4. And now look. Boom. And it goes back. And right now it goes back in around 15 to 17, 17 seconds. We will make it go back in around, you know, in around 10 seconds. So you see? And this is the, the 3D break that make it go slower and it won't go to 6 o'clock. It, it will go to 6.30 about this because it's a prototype. We wanted to give some margin not to, to go to the limit of the watch. But then, you see, then it's 6.30 in the evening, it's 7 o'clock, it is 7.30, it is 8 o'clock, and so on, and so on, and so on. And now the beauty of this it's when I return the watch, and you really see the beautiful uh, movement. It's our own uh, development movement. We have done this in partnership with Cronod, with Jean-François Mojon in Le Loc. And we needed to, to create a, our own movement, because as you see, we, we needed to free up some space to, to have the liquid module. In, I call it the south of the watch, and in the north of the watch, you have the, the movement. So it's mechanical movement, 65 hours power reserve, and developing enough energy to push and move those two pistons and to indicate time. Okay, go 
backwards, I can play the way I want. You have to set the time because you are in a plane, you change your time zone, bam, you just reset the time. And then, I, you know, again, fix the crown, done. It will also come with a deployment buckle. Right now it's Ardillon, but it will come with a deployment buckle as well for the people that want.